Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie, if you are new here, and welcome back to another episode of History of Bands. Today's band was a ton of fun to research just because there's not a lot about them out there. So it was fun to get to learn more about them, to learn the lore. So today's band is going to be Sleep Token. So if you guys wanna hang out while I do some makeup and tell you about the history of Sleep Token, then just keep on watching. Sleep Token was originally formed in 2016 in London. They're a band that's really difficult to put a label on, pulling influences from hip hop, R&B, jazz, pop, as well as rock and metal, obviously. Their style has definitely evolved over the years, but it's landed on an eclectic but beautifully composed blend of innovation. Shrouded in mystery, their identities are as unknown as what their official genre would be. They are masked and anonymous and just here to provide music as a whole experience. Corey Taylor once said in an interview that Sleep Token reminds him of the early iterations of Slipknot. Their first release was in September of 2016, a single titled oh, Thread the Needle, followed up by a three song EP titled One. This EP caught the attention of Basic Records. It was announced in May of 2017 that they were signed to the label and that they were going to be releasing their second EP, Two, in July. They released the single Calcutta in May of 2017 followed up by the single Nazareth in June. From the band's inception, they have always pushed for a blend of rock and metal with other genres, so it's no surprise that the reviews for these two songs were praising the innovation. In May of 2017, Vessel, the band's lead singer, gave their first and only interview, which served to create much of the band's lore that is still referenced to this day. Thinking about an ancient deity known as Sleep, Vessel refers to themselves only in third person. The interview touched briefly on the band's desire to remain anonymous, as they want the music to speak for itself, not who is or isn't in the band. When asked about the genre of music that they create, Vessel said, don't get lost in genres, they'll only disorient you. Music is for everyone. When asked if people would view them as a gimmick and eventually get tired of it, Vessel said, We're here to deliver a message, touch people in their hearts and subconscious minds. Soon, regardless of cynicism, you'll all be followers. They made their first live appearance on June 17th, 2017 at the Blackheart in London, and then spent the next year or so playing live shows as openers for bands like loathe and holding absence and even had some festival shows in june of 2018 they released a standalone single called jaws a song that beautifully combines ethereal piano lines chuggy guitar riffs snappy drums and vessel's unique vocal style in august of 2018 they released their cover of outcasts hey ya ahead of their reading and leads festival performances it was a piano ballad of a hip-hop classic that gave the song a completely different feel. After playing only 11 shows total in the band's career, they played their very first headline show in October of 2018 and also released another standalone single called The Way That You Were. The headline show was in an old church and reportedly sold out in under 30 seconds. In June of 2019, Sleep Token announced that they signed with Spine Farm Records, a subsidiary of Universal. Within that first announcement, the band also released the title of their first full-length album, Sundowning, as well as releasing the intro track to that record, The Night Does Not Belong to God. For newer fans, the bridge of The Night Does Not Belong to God may sound familiar as it was revamped and used as the outro in the last song on their most recent album, Euclid. Sleep Token continued to release a new song every two weeks up until the release of Sundowning, which was on November 21st, 2019. The album received generally positive reviews and it also did not produce any technical singles since they released every single song. There was no like defined single for the album. With the success of the record, the band played a few sold out headline shows in their home country 
and embarked on their first North American tour in support of Issues alongside Polyphia and Lil Aaron. As an aside, I think one of the coolest but also worst parts about doing these like history of bands and researching is finding out about old tours that they did before I knew the band existed because like now seeing issues and sleep token together would have been such a fun show especially like back in 2019 that would have been such a fun show in the summer of 2020 the band released a deluxe reissue of sundowning featuring four piano based songs a reimagining of bloodsport a new song called shelter a cover of billy eilish's when the party's over and a cover of whitney houston's i want to dance with somebody Okay, much like my history of Bad Omens video, I'm not going to pretend like I can do winged liner on camera with you guys while also reading and staying in focus and staying in frame. So I'm gonna go do that off of camera and I will be right back. Sleep Token had an otherwise quiet and private 2020. They were scheduled to return to the stage in March of 2021 with a series of socially distanced shows called the Isolation Rituals. However, due to a rise in COVID cases, those shows were canceled. On June 17th, 2021, Sleep Token announced their second full-length album, This Place Will Become Your Tomb, and released the single Alkaline. The following day, they made their return to the stage at Download Fest Pilot. In August, the band released the single The Love You Want, and then in September released the single Fall For Me. This Place Will Become Your Tomb was released on September 24th, 2021, which landed them at number 39 on the UK Albums Chart and number 13 on the Scottish Album Chart. The album received generally positive reviews and landed them on multiple Album of the Year lists. They did a short eight-date tour run with support from A.A. A. Williams, and in May of 2022, they were support for Architects and Malevolence, and then later on toured in North America, supporting In This Moment, Nothing More, and Cherry Bombs. Towards the end of 2022, the band announced a UK headline tour in January of 2023 with support from North Lane. On January 5th, 2023, the band released the first single, Chokehold, from their third full-length album, Take Me Back to Eden. Chokehold got them their first U.S. chart spots, landing them at number 37 on the U.S. rock chart. The very next day, the band released a single that sent them on a completely new trajectory, The Summer. A progressive metal vibe that leads into an ethereal build and finishes with what could only be described as a jazz-inspired fuckfest, in my husband's words. The song gained traction on social media and is their most streamed song to date by far. The song charted number 14 on UK rock and number 22 on US rock. Two weeks later, on the heels of the success of The Summoning, they released the third single, Granite, which hit number 38 on US rock charts. The following day, they released Aqua Risha, a silky smooth song with a beautiful piano ballad. On February 15th, 2023, they released the single, Vor, the heaviest song from the album so far. The same day that they released Vor, they also announced the release date and the name of their third album. In March and April, they began announcing festival dates as well as an upcoming U.S. headliner tour, the North American Rituals. The U.S. headliner tour sold out in two days, all before Take Me Back to Eden was even actually released. A few days later, they announced the Summer Rituals tour in the U.K. None of these tours have a supporting act at least as of filming, there hasn't been an announced supporting act for the North American Rituals tour, but it's gearing up to start soon. I, I don't know, I haven't seen anything about it. They didn't have support for the UK tour, so. On April 19th, 2023, Sleep Token released the final single from their upcoming album, Do You Wish That You Loved Me, stylized as just the acronym. A modern pop track that strongly deviates from the previous five singles that they've released. On May 19th, 2023, Sleep Token released their highly anticipated third album, Take Me Back to Eden. The album received mixed critical reviews, 
with some praising the album's variety and genre bending composure, while others tried to claim that it was overindulgent. Ultimately though, what matters the most is fan consumption, and Take Me Back to Eden is their most successful album to date. Charting at number three on UK albums, number two on UK rock and metal albums, number 16 on the US Billboard 200, number two on US top hard rock albums, and many more charts worldwide. On May 26, 2023, Sleep Token won the Heavy Metal Award for Best UK Artist. That same month, they announced a standalone headline show at the Wembley Arena, a venue with a 10,000 person capacity. Tickets sold out within 10 minutes. There's been speculation and rumors that Take Me Back to Eden is the band's last album. And much of this comes from fan interpretation of their only interview in 2017. That interview came out on May 19th, 2017, and exactly seven years later, on May 19th, 2023, Take Me Back to Eden came out. The interview ends with who everyone assumes to be Vessel, though it's never actually specified in the interview, saying nothing lasts forever. Three words, three albums. Couple that with the lyrical crossover between the first song, The Night Does Not Belong to God, from their first record, Sundowning, and the last song, Euclid, from their last album. I've even seen articles try to claim that it's the end of a trilogy, but there's been absolutely no confirmation of that from the band themselves. Okay, I have some really fine detail work that I need to do to finish up this makeup look, so I'm gonna go do all of that off camera, and then I will be back to finish up this video. As of filming, Sleep Token is gearing up to head out on their US headliner tour in the fall, North American Rituals. The band is as elusive as their music is intriguing. Unfortunately, that means that they haven't done an interview since 2017, and their social media accounts give no hints towards the future. The combination of their anonymity and secretive nature have kept longtime fans interested and catches new fans' attention. But what truly keeps everyone coming back to worship is their phenomenal musicianship, their ability to compose in unique ways, and their awe-inspiring live performances. And I truly believe that whatever the band wants to do in the future, they can and they will succeed at it. And that is going to wrap up my history of Sleep Token. I don't really have to give this disclaimer like I did with my Bad Omens video, but I'm gonna do it anyway, mostly because I did stumble upon things as I was doing this research. None of my history of band videos are ever going to discuss things that the band hasn't put out themselves. I did touch briefly on, you know, rumors about this being a trilogy and about the band being done with Take Me Back to Eden as kind of fan speculation, but nothing that would be considered private information that the band members haven't put out themselves will never be in any of my videos because if a band hasn't discussed it, then it's not worth me talking about. I'm not here to speculate. I'm not here to guess who is behind the masks of Sleep Token or anything like that. I am here to talk about the facts and the history and what made a band as successful or not successful in some cases as they are. And I do understand that for some fans out there, the identity behind the mask, particularly when it comes to Bessel himself, it plays into the lore and there's stories behind, you know, who he is and who who he's writing about and and who hurt him in a lot of cases, honestly. And like who he's pining after and all of that, but like, in my personal opinion, it's just that, it's lore. The band themselves have not confirmed it. They've kind of written their own little bit of lore like they did in the 2017 interview with discussions of an ancient deity and you know, how they're they're worshiping and, and you know, rituals and stuff like that. Like there's, there's little, the, the band has definitely built lore themselves but taking it this many steps farther, finding out who, you know, who's behind the mask and finding out things about their personal lives. Uh, for me personally, it's several steps too far. 
uh, I unfortunately learned things I didn't need to know. Um, which is, that's now two for two on these history videos that I have learned things that I didn't need to know and I don't think that anyone needs to know personally. It's, it's irrelevant to the band itself, it's irrelevant to the music, it's irrelevant to their performances, it's fucking just irrelevant, you know? <laughs> that's my, my soapbox little end to this video. If you're also here for the makeup, I will have all of the products that I used today listed and linked down below. The ones marked with asterisks are affiliate links that does help support my channel. Uh, you're absolutely not required to use them, but if you're curious about something that I used today, it's down below. Um, as an unrelated aside, I always plan my makeup looks. Like I had this plan out, planned and like drawn out and stuff like that. So I knew going in today, into today that it was a little bit more of a like detail intensive makeup look tell me why i thought it was a good idea to drink coffee before doing like graphic liner because i struggled with that but that is gonna wrap up my history of sleep token comment down below and let me know your thoughts on sleep token and also comment down below and let me know about any band that you would love to hear about because i definitely am making a running list i'm having so much fun doing these videos i have a really fun one for the month of october that's very on point for halloween not that Sleep Token wouldn't have been, but I feel like this upcoming band is going to be even better for Halloween, so I'm really, really excited to just dive in and start working on that one. I know that a lot of the other bands that I have on my list now are bands that have been around for significantly longer than Bad Omens and Sleep Token have been, so videos might start getting a little bit longer. We'll see. I don't know. I may have to drop the whole, like, they released this single and this single and this single and this single and kind of just hit the, the more high notes with them because especially with like the upcoming band I'm gonna have member changes and you know tons of albums and I probably am not gonna be continuously lift, listing off like what tours they're doing and stuff like that like I'm gonna have to definitely start editing down so that my videos don't end up being super long though I will say ironically both of these videos both Bad Omens and Sleep Token have been videos that I have filmed faster than I expected to like literally had to do makeup off camera so that I wasn't completely done filming the video before I was completely done doing my makeup kind of thing so I don't know we'll see how it all works out but I'm very excited to continue doing this series I hope that you guys are enjoying it I am filming this before the Bad Omens video goes up so I have no idea what the what the response is even like yet to the style of video we'll see i'm loving it though so i'm gonna keep doing it but like i said definitely comment down below let me know your thoughts on sleep token let me know any bands that you would love to hear about because i am definitely making that running list like i said please subscribe for future history of the band videos makeup videos if you're into that as well i do a ton of that on my channel ring the bell like the video I have a specific outro and for some reason my brain is just not processing it at the moment but yeah ring the bell hit the like the video all that do that for me it helps my channel <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one bye la, la.